Hello again, it is Fake Hero coming at you with another best decks to reach masters for the month of February. I've taken the time to select quite a few decks here, so each and every one of these I would definitely recommend for you to climb with. And whether you be a veteran or a more newer player, each of these decks I would recommend you build towards if you're trying to craft up a pretty competitive strategy. Traditionally in Legends of Runeterra, we do receive frequent balance changes, so it's important that I release this kind of video not too soon or not too late. And within the month of February, as the seasonal tournament is quite close, I've chosen to release this video a bit sooner than I traditionally uh, would. This is because I'm sure a lot of players want to qualify for the seasonal tournament, so I've gone ahead and crafted up a list of decks here I would definitely recommend. Now, I've used a mild amount of meta lists and data, but mostly general knowledge of how I feel the Masters games play out and what to expect to see, and then also for generally climbing through the lower ranks such as Platinum to Diamond, etc. These decks here are the ones I will definitely recommend. Now, if there's a list or a deck that I have not shared here today. It might not necessarily mean that it's not a good deck to climb with. It's just, I don't specifically believe it, it can provide the best results. So without further ado, I hope you enjoy your decks. I've selected for you guys here today. And uh, if you have time, leave a like on the video. It makes a huge difference. Have a fantastic day. I'll see you soon. So in the month of January, we saw the rise and fall of Twisted Fate. Uh, Twisted Fate, go hard etc gp whatever elise and now kind of the similar deck that kind of runs the metagame right now is forms of twisted fate decks there's so many specifically i'm sure a lot of people by now have seen the twisted fate and fizz deck i don't want to go into too much detail about this deck but it is still probably top of the metagame and realistically the best deck to climb with if you're looking to just seriously slam ladder and then if you don't don't mind playing mirror matchups this is a deck that is going to provide you very good results if you learn how to master and play the deck effectively. We had some recent additional tools in stress testing. Now this does kind of push it even further beyond its own limits before in terms of being able to flip Twisted Fate very consistently. Uh, protecting Twisted Fate is quite limited in this list, but you just establish so many threats and Burble Fish is becoming one of the most craziest cards in the game currently uh, playing zero mana three one elusive units and then providing insane value with iterative improvement to play them over and over and kind of just always have gas and never run out this deck's just really good because it, it features so many powerful cards and tools uh, that are unmatched in other regions so if you are looking to climb and you want to play the best deck in the game right now it will be fizz and twisted fate now to combo alongside this deck the recent up and comer is actually going to be the where are you my friend twisted fate and affilios we're yet to see where this will kind of end up whether affilios and twisted fate is the best deck or whether it be uh, just traditional twi Twisted Fate and Fizz is the best, but this deck is also just as insane, but it kind of features very similar tools, right? We have the Burble Fish, we have Twisted Fate and Card Draw. This is my personal list at the moment, but there's a few out there you can go for. Uh, Mr. Emotional has a fantastic deck guide on this. I will actually leave a link to that alongside the deck code down below. If you want to go watch that, it teaches you everything you need to know about this deck. This deck is very new, but it's providing insane results and it may become one of the best decks in the meta game. Now that's strictly because Aphilios is a new champion. Aphilios is a really strong champion and he shines very well on this list, specifically alongside Boxtopus. That's like one of the main reasons to be in Bilgewater other than the fact that we run Twisted Fate because Twisted Fate's very powerful, but the insane value you get from Boxtopus alongside Aphilios makes this one of the most craziest swing decks in the game and then you just never run out of gas with vile temple and the classic burble fish vile temple's actually been surprisingly performing extremely well so if you're looking for one of the best affiliates decks to play as well this is going to be one one of the decks that i recommend now take the time to learn how to play this deck and the twisted fate fizz deck because they've got a little bit of decision making that is kind of unmatched in other decks so if you want to go ahead and learn how to play those decks as fast as you can, they're going to be your best decks to climb. The rest of the decks I'm going to be covering are just going to be a mix and match of decks in no particular order and no particular strength. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and cover them. One of the other frequent decks I'm seeing quite a lot of Masters and is performing generally still really good is actually going to be Fiora Shen. Uh, I'm led to believe that I, I feel like Aphilios and Twisted Fate might just kind of be it 
a cut above the rest in terms of providing mid-range threats, but Fiora Shen is still a fantastic deck, so if you've taken the time to play plenty of Fiora Shen in the past and you're kind of getting back into the climb or you're wondering about what to play, you can still stick with Fiora Shen and have a good time climbing. Every now and then you're going to face off against some Anivia decks too and just pretty much easy consistently win against that, but um, it, Fiora Shen does a good job of like beating the other decks that aren't Aphelios and Ezreal, sorry Aphelios and Twist of Fate and Twist of Fate and Fizz. Uh, Fiora Shen still does a fantastic job against them, and Fiora actually against the Fizz and Twisted Fate uh, variant specifically, you have some pretty good tools against them, so uh, I won't go into too much detail about the deck, it's pretty much for newer players, it's a more mid-range deck that has lots of combat tricks and it's very unit focused in its win condition, so if you're looking for that kind of strategy, this could be a deck I would recommend for you to climb with. So to run it back for a second, let's revisit Discard Aggro, which doesn't seem to ever die even when you think it might be dying it still just somehow manages to exist in the metagame and be a pretty effective um, aggressive strategy now the reason why this deck didn't die is because it has a pretty good time farming against a lot of affiliates decks right now so if you're looking for a very aggressive deck to play for newer players uh, Draven Jinx is actually one of the most fantastic aggro decks in the game and will probably be unmatched against any other aggressive strategies. Now there is kind of like a, uh, a burn deck within uh, Teemo, like a Teemo, very aggressive burn deck. You may have seen it before, you may have thought about playing it. I'm going to recommend you play Draven Jinx instead. Uh, this deck just doesn't want to have gas. That's, I think that's what one of its greatest strengths is, is that it's like an aggressive deck that just doesn't run out of steam and you can keep just threatening uh, your opponent because Jinx is kind of insane for providing lots of damage within one card and then you kind of just have tons of cycle with Augmented Experimenter and Rummage. This is my personal list here, but you may have seen many different variants. You can go with each and every one you want. Uh, the mostly, the biggest change you'll see in these uh, discard aggro decks is usually within the one drops. You're going to see some very similar top end cards, but some of the one drops may change here and there. To keep things uh, keep things simple, I've gone for the uh, single copy of Draven's Biggest Fan because sometimes you can play it on turn one and kind of, or turn two, and then curve into your Draven uh, very nicely. But yeah, I won't go into too much more detail about this list if you want to play an aggressive strategy this is the way to go you're going to have a hard time against any shadow isles and free old decks now speaking about shadow isles and free old i'm going to kind of cover two decks here in particular i want to go over something that's like kind of not new but has made a pretty good comeback which is going to be anivia decks so anivia is pretty much just a yeah, massive late game control deck it hasn't got like a really solid finish but the ability for this deck to beat up on most aggro decks and kind of slam a lot of mid-range decks with such powerful removal uh, makes it one of the best straightforward control decks in the game there's a few uh, important decisions to make with a lot of your top end cards but in general it's a very reasonably easy deck to pilot so if you're looking for a more slower uh, make your opponent cry kind of strategy. This is going to be the way to go. Now it does struggle against uh, Ionia in general. So when you face off against Fiora Shen, if you're facing a decent player, they might be able to outplay you and win. But I think unlike the other deck I'm going to cover here, which is going to be Phil the Rush, which if you know about it, I think the Anivia deck has a slight edge against the Fiora Shen because it's not as susceptible to deny. Now I might be going into too much detail here guys, sorry if you're newer to the game, but basically, typically, sorry, uh, Ionia decks tend to have a pretty good time against some of these Shadow Isle decks because Shadow Isles is generally pretty susceptible to uh, deny. But uh, I think Anivia, with some of the new tools that we do have, kind of makes it a little bit better of a control deck to play in the current meta, especially with Fiora Shens running around, because you can play Anivia and then play your Rekindlers and kind of like Chronicle of Ruin and kill your own guy and then Gluttony, and you have multiple ways of kind of develop developing more pressure that isn't as susceptible to deny. Uh, makes it a little bit more comfortable to play, especially with Fiora Shen running around on the ladder game. Now going across to the Feel the Rush deck, now this would typically be a, a much more better late game strategy than a Nivea because you have some pretty consistent uh, finishes within such cards as Atrocity and Feel the Rush alongside uh, Commander Lidros, making this deck have a much more easier way of executing a late game 
finish. However, I think this deck is going to be a little bit more susceptible to Fiora Shen because it's a little bit more greedy in terms of its uh, utility tools. And then, um, yeah, there's plenty of Fiora Shen running around. So I think Anivia kind of edges this out a little bit, but this is still going to be a fantastic deck to climb with. Um, if there was no Fiora Shen on ladder, this is going to be a much better strategy for you to go with. So if you're not facing much Fiora Shen, uh, try picking up this deck. They play a little bit similarly, but um, this is a little bit more aggressive in its way of finishing. So yeah, that'll be Feel the Rush deck there. Okay guys, so we have a couple more decks to cover. I won't take up too much of your time. I'm gonna go over... Let's go over Lee Sin next. So recently we've been seeing a kind of flourish of Aphilios being paired up with Lee Sin. Now in the past we saw Zoe being paired up with Lee Sin and that was a fantastic deck. I didn't cover it in my January uh, best decks to reach master's guide, but I wish I did. I just overlooked it at the time. So it was bad, bad judgment call by me or just lazy. I don't know. Uh, Lee Sin is just, for any newer players, Lee Sin kind of comes in as your combo finisher kind of card. So this is a heavily combo focused deck, which requires you to kind of put your thinking cap on and understand your limits in terms of how much damage you can take before you choose to go all in. Uh, so I think if you learn how to master to play a Lee Sin decks, then you can have just as an effective climb as you would playing Twist of Fate and Fizz or Fizz uh, Twist of Fate and Aphilios. Those decks are a little bit more easier to pile than this, but any good Lee Sin player will just make you cry. So if you're looking to kind of really pick up some skills in Runeterra and learn all the fundamentals as well. Uh, playing Lee Sin decks can really just push you above the rest and like a lot of the time you'll be facing plenty of players especially as you're climbing up the ranks that don't quite know how to play against this deck so if you're looking to really hard climb as well I would recommend uh, the Lee Sin and Aphilios deck or Lee Sin and Zoe if you prefer. I'm just going to make a judgment call. I think Aphilios is going to edge out Zoe in the long term in terms of who to pair up with Lee Sin, but each, uh, either one of those decks is fine. Uh, Filios and Lee Sin's a little bit newer of an experimentation, but has been finding a lot of success. So I would still recommend this deck in particular. And the last deck we will cover today, Draven Ezreal. Draven Ezreal is still a really good deck and it does have some fantastic tools for dealing with threats such as Twisted Fate and Aphilios. Uh, does suffer into like kind of like the Feel the Rush kind of matchups and the Shadow Wilds decks because they have quite a lot of healing, but this deck can sometimes win too. Captain Farron is a pretty insane finisher, even though it did uh, suffer quite a nerf in terms of having one decimate removed from the pool that you find from Captain Farron, becoming still, it's still just in general a really strong finisher and most of the time you only need one or two decimates to win anyway. Lots of fantastic tools here, very good at dealing with mid-range threats. This deck would do pretty well against Fiora Shen as well, and I don't see why it couldn't be like the good answer to the popular decks. Now, I think uh, the Burble, the Twist of Fate and Fizz deck can just never run out of gas as well against this, unlike the Aphilios Twist of Fate deck might, but um, I think Draven Ezreal is still a really good, deck, really good deck to climb with. Maybe if you're short on resources and this is a deck that you have been playing, stick to this deck. But I think some of the other decks I've shared here today might just be better at the moment, but still, I can't sleep on Draven Ezreal. It's been a pretty reformed archetype for quite some time and one that I still can still believe will win you games and help you climb. Thank you guys. I've shared with you the best decks to reach masters within February in Legends of Runeterra. I just want to mention I am streaming over on Twitch four days a week. I would appreciate it if you made the time to come drop me a follow. Links in the description. I have a little pop up there too. Um, it means a lot. Just come pop in if you ever have time to tune in. Just say, hey, I'm here from the YouTube. That would be really nice to hear from you. Anyway, have a fantastic day. Good luck in your climbs, guys. I really do hope y'all reach the goals you were trying to aim for. And for anybody trying to qualify for the seasonal tournament, keep at it. And if you don't qualify this season, there's always the next season, okay? Take care now.